This is the VeloBuild VBR 218 disc brake bike in a size medium, weighing at 17 pounds, 11 ounces, and the kilos, eight kilos with the pedals on there. Stay tuned to the video for a real body Sunday after with the Hyper 50 wheels. All right, guys, I have here the VeloBuild VBR 218 disc brake frame set. This was a custom complete build up, a project that I've been working on for a while now. Uh, this whole thing costs around $2,000 total with wheels, components, everything, pedals included, everything. I'm gonna go over all the details, where I got it from, and what my plans are for this bike in the future. But what do you guys think of it? It looks very, very aesthetically pleasing. It's paint ready. I didn't paint it because I like the stealth look of it. Um, but Velo Build, I'll put a link down to the description below where you guys can buy this thing at. Uh, the whole frame, C post, handlebar, and stem combo only came out to $500. I will talk about some woes that I had with it while building it. I did have some footage of it back in the day, but I can't find it anymore. I think I deleted it off my phone. But I'll talk to you guys everything that I encountered while building it and the problems I had with it. But in terms of that, I've ridden it a couple times and I'll talk to you guys what I want to do with it in the future. So this whole frame set, like I mentioned before, is only $500 from Velo Build. They do include, or they do add on shipping when you do check it out, uh, or when, when you do check out uh, from the website. But that purchase does include the whole frame set, which is a very beautiful frame set. It's kind of like this like matte carbon kind of look, which is paint ready. And you can actually choose to have them paint it over there as well for an extra added cost. You do get the seat post included with it. You also do get the one piece barn stem combo. It does come with the spacers as well. This is the max amount of spacers that I came with. And this is a size medium on their website. Now I'm about six foot and this fits me and I'm riding it. The only reason why I got a medium at the time is because they didn't have a large in stock, but it came in really, really nice. It is a disc brake option and it has through axles on there as well, which came in very, very nice. Again, I'm pretty sure you guys know why I chose this one because I think the aesthetics of it looks really good. And I don't think I could ever afford one of these other ones in real life, so I went ahead and got this from Velo Build, which I think looks really, really cool. The group set that I got in here is the Sensa Empire Pro. This is a two by 12 mechanical group set, two gears in the front, 12 in the rear. You have the carbon fiber cage, you have a 1134 cassette, a 5339 tooth uh, chain around here. Um, the, the shifters on here are, are very similar to a SRAM shift with a carbon fiber lever. The hoods are nice and small ergonomic, and it's just like kind of like that double tap feature. You have one swing to make it shift and then one sh click in to turn down. Very surprised with it. I actually did a whole video in group reveal on this full group set. Uh, you can get this whole thing, I think for like, I want to say, what was it? $900 I think it was. No, hold on a second. No, I got the whole group set for $500 shipped from AliExpress. Shifters, crank, bottom bracket, chain, cassette, rear derailleur, front derailleur, disc brakes, and brake calibers, everything included for $500, which I thought was a pretty crazy deal in terms of today's component prices and everything like that. It is a Chinese group set, yes, they're a well-known China company, but in terms of me riding it, in terms of me running it and how it came out, it's very nice. The only downside I would say, which is not part of the Sensa Pro group set, these disc brake calipers on here are horrible. I think these are a hybrid, a half cable actuated, half hydraulic uh, system. The stopping power on those things suck. I don't know if it has to do with just the caliper itself or with how many bends and turns this thing has to go through with these internally routed cables. Mind you again, it's a mechanical shifting group. So you have two cables running here, two cables running here. You have four cables in total running down there. A lot of bends and twists and turns for this housing. So they stop, yeah. And they're both 140 millimeter rotors. I could probably put on bigger rotors, but not like a hydraulic disc brake rotor is. But again, I think I see uh, other companies out there coming out with a hydraulic disc brake group set. Um, uh, what's the name? El Woot, I believe. I, I'm sorry if I butchered that name. But there are making these, these Chinese companies are making strives to make a more affordable group set price uh, for consumers. And I was really blown away by just being a 2x12 group set. You're getting a modern day group set with whatever kind of configuration you want, whatever kind of bottom bracket you want. This is a BSA bottom bracket as well. Um, it's not Italian threaded, it's regular English thread but it is a threaded bottom bracket. You choose whatever bottom bracket you want on there, and it's very nice. So I really did enjoy that group set. I still do enjoy that group set. I think it's a very, very nice group set for the money. And if you, ever, if you guys ever needed something in place of a 105 mechanical or in place of a Tiagra, they are a serious competitor for that matter. The wheels I chose to go with are the Hyper 50, um, the Windspace Hyper or Loon Hyper 50 millimeter depth wheels. These are the older style, they're not the D45s, these are the old school 50. 
50 millimeter front, 50 millimeter rear, carbon fiber spokes, and then ceramic bearings on there as well. These wheels have been tried and true. They work really well. The wheels are only coming out to about $1,000. So that brings us to a total of $500 for the frame, $500 for the group set, $1,000 for the wheels. And then I added the bar tape, seat, and pedals on there as well, which I have look carbon keel ceramic pedals on there. Now, that's all fine and dandy. The bike rode really well. I did a whole ride review on this bike. The bike rode very well for what it is. It is a heavier bike, as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, uh, around, I think, 8 kilos or almost 17 pounds, 18 pounds. Um, the only thing I will say is that it just felt very dense. It didn't feel like it, uh, it, didn't feel like it jolted when you stepped on the bike. It didn't feel like it, it reacted as quick as I wanted to. Uh, the carbon just feels like a denser carbon. And I can relate this to, like, a, a bottom-tier um, carbon fiber frame from a big big name brand like specialized like the, maybe like their base model SL6 or maybe like a base model any kind of carbon fiber bike it does not feel like a premium carbon fiber that's out there I know some of you guys might say it's a gimmick but working in the industry riding these bikes being in the industry for well over 15 years uh, and being around bicycles for 20 years um, you do feel a difference between different carbon grades you do feel differences between the changes of the frame and stuff like that so this just felt like a denser carbon to me and it felt like it was a little bit harder to hold top end speed and didn't react as quickly as I wanted to. Um, but with that being said, if I spent two grand on this whole bike and that's how it turned out with maybe a custom paint job on there, I would be very excited and very static for everything it was. Uh, it was very comfortable because of the dense carbon. Um, I didn't have any issues with seat droppage. I didn't have any issues with that. Nothing like that. It, it, it actually was a pretty nice ride. Now, the only downside I'll say to this was the build process. Um, give me one second. So a couple things I wish I still had on here. Uh, the bottom bracket itself, the threads on the bottom bracket, I wish I had a video because I took videos of this thing. The bottom brackets on here from the get-go, the, the beginning threads on here were trash. I mean, I literally tried to th screw in this bottom bracket every which way, multiple times. It wasn't grabbing, it wasn't catching. I had to go ahead and get a tapping tool and re-tap out the threads on this bottom bracket, push in from one side and push in from the other side and really get through. But before I could even get to that bottom bracket where it was just a pain in the ass to get to, um, the crank itself on the bottom here, there's a little port, which I'm gonna lift up right now, like a drainage port or a cable port. You can see right there, see that little cap cover that opens up? That bolt rivet right there, that bolt that screws in, there's a rivet inside the frame. Hold on, car's coming. Oh, okay, I'm gonna die. Long story short, I didn't die. Anyways, there's a rivet that screws into that frame. When I put the crank spindle inside of the frame, it was literally hitting the crank spindle. So here's a crank spindle like this. Then a rivet was going into the, the bottom of my finger right there. And that was causing it to drag. Literally, it'll, you try to spin that crank itself and it'll sit, be like, it'll be like there's peanut butter inside the crank. So I'd have to go in there. I took a flat face file. I filed down that rivet. Uh, pretty good for, for almost like two or three minutes. Filed that rivet down. Then we were able to insert the crank. After that wasn't a big deal. The front derailleur routing for that cable or that, that front mech going up in there, it was kind of a pain in the ass as well to go underneath and up around the crank. Um, I definitely recommend if you're gonna run this yourself, install the front derailleur or run the cable through first before you install the crank because it's very easy to push a cable or housing out of the way and shove a crank in there. I think if this was an electric group set or if you had a wireless, like a rival group set here, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. All you have to do is just follow down that rivet. But again, I, I wish I mean, I'm nickel and diamond here, but if you're buying a finished product that says it works right out of the box, I hope for God's sake that you wouldn't have to do this as a consumer at your house to file down that rivet, because I can see that going wrong real quick. Maybe someone takes a file and, and files down their threads on their frame. A bunch of things can happen. So that was one of the issues I had. Another issue was with the headset spacers and the bottom brackets, these split apart. Um, I just wish they gave you just regular space on here or the, the, the fork didn't seem to fit right for a little bit. We had to bash in the bearing. <laughs> I know bash is a really bad word, but we had to bash in the bearing on the bottom with a rubber mallet to get the bearing to see in there. It wasn't fitting in there easily. So I literally had to take a, one I took really, really thin, fine sandpaper, find this down and kind of just like, you know, just gave a little quick, quick to take off the harsh edges. Greased up that hole real nice. Yeah. And then I greased up the bearing real nice. Yeah. And then I took it a rubber mallet. I was like, bah, bah, bah. And then it worked. I don't know if I'll be able to get it out, but there's no binding. There's no nothing like that. And it works flawlessly. So those were the two big issues that I really had. And then just the third issue, which is just my preference because of the groups that I ran. 
a four cable integrated one piece bar and stem combo all the way down the frame. I will never do that again. If you're buying a fully integrated bike, you should go electronic. It was a pain in the ass. A lot of cables popping out everywhere. A lot of two man jobs holding onto things they shouldn't be holding onto. It was crazy. It seemed like a party of a movie. But all in all, like I said, if I was a consumer spending two grand of my own hard earned money on this bike, one, aesthetically, this bike checks out the box. Two, I'm getting a great deep dish pair of wheels on there. Three, I'm getting a two by 12 mechanical group set that's been tried and true that people do love and it works efficiently and you're getting a 12 speed group set that people are riding today's day, uh, I will be very happy with it. You slap on a good looking paint job in here, maybe your own done paint job or maybe you take it somewhere nice, maybe extra 300, 400 bucks of paint job on there and you have yourself a stellar looking bike, a very fast, expensive looking bike for $2,500. So that was my experience with Velo Build. Uh, again, I'll put a link down to where you guys can get them at. It's a Velo Build VBR 218 disc brake model. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know if you have any questions down below. But yeah. Free up, buy some of the type of 50 wheel. Good. 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 Good.